Germany, in France, in the US, the UK, and the Czech Republic. And she has done studio films, independent productions, as well as TV series. Uh, the subject matters have included historical and contemporary issues, literary adaptations, as well as original scripts. Uh, the films have brought representations into the insights of the histories and experiences of diverse groups and individuals and are often pressed for the inner depths or inner truths of humanity caught up in extraordinary or extreme circumstances. So without much further ado, please welcome Ms. Agnieszka Holland and Ms. Cassia Madelink. So the first question would be about the adaptation. Um, the movie is adapted from Olga Trokuchik's Okachuk. Okachuk. <laughs> uh, the novel, uh, uh, what's the novel? Uh, it novel. was called um, hmm. um, Draw of Your Plot. Well, over the Bones of the Dead. Over the Bones of the Dead. You understand that I had to change the title. Yes. And, um, so what makes you interested in the novel and how was your collaboration with Olga on, on the script who is also the screenwriter of the movie? Um, Olga Tokarczuk is uh, probably the most famous Polish uh, woman writer, also translated to many languages and um, recipient of many literary prizes. Uh, maybe one, one day Nobel's prize, who knows. Uh, and um, I, I was reading all her books in the moment of the appearance. And this one was the first one, which after reading, uh, I thought it would be possible maybe to make a film out of that. Because it looked like very compact, very story-driven and character-driven uh, novel, simple enough to translate to the screen. Her other novels have many, many layers and are very literary. <laughs> and, um, also, the subject matter I found so provocative and so fresh and that I thought that it would be interesting for me to make the movie like that. Um, and then we started with Kasia to talk about the um, possibility of a um, mix of genres to make something. I, I wanted to make the movie different from my previous movies, which have been mostly like, quite straightforward psychological, historical dramas. And in this one, it's not so clear what it really is. And, and I thought that it would be easy to adapt, so and I asked Olga herself, who never did the adaptation of her own work before, and if, she, if she feels that she can try. And she said, oh yeah, somebody told me that it's, that, that, that it's practically the script is already in. So she wrote it quickly, quite quickly, and it was terrible. It was awful. We read it, and both of us had the impression that it just so flat and so boring and so ideological that it would be maybe impossible to translate this uh, this book into the screen. Uh, so we sat together, and spent some few weeks, like working together. And I was sure that in three months we'll have the script ready. And two years later, and 17 drafts later, it was still not ready. So um, it appeared that the novel in some way defended herself, didn't want to make to be the movie or something. But we've been perseverant because after spending so much of time with something, we wanted to have the result. And and it was also quite difficult to find the money for that, enough of money for that, uh, because exactly the, the financiers, when we've been coming uh, to them with the, uh, with, the, with the script, they say, okay, but what it is? Is it thriller? No, it's not really thriller. 
It is a comedy, not really fairy tale, drama, what it is. So <laughs> I came with the explanation, which I think it's quite accurate, which was that it is anarchistic, feministic, ecological thriller with the, <laughs> with the elements of black comedy and fairy tale. <laughs> After, after, the financiers said, uh-huh, hmm. and they like gave some money, not maybe like enough, but they gave some money. So, um, and you know, and after you can see the titles are so long because of all the financiers, you know, There's yeah, a lot of financiers. Yeah, titles are long, like for Star Wars, actually. Something like that. <laughs> it was also the, the co-production of five countries. So everything took very long time. The writing of the script, the looking for money, and shooting was very long because we covered four seasons. And post-production was very long because um, uh, it was five countries and we need to do different elements in different countries. Um, now we are in Hong Kong. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, the production is Dushenko. She's a retired engineer, but at the same time she believes in astrology and also she's a translator of Blake. So it seems a curious blend of rationality and mysticism. Like most of my f f female friends. So, so what I want to ask is, is this not uncommon among, for people of a generation? A generation, I mean, that people who live under communism see this downfall, have been led to believe that there will be progress and democracy, and then with things happening in the past few years with the Law and Justice Department and mass worldwide of women's rights and deforestation, there is some kind of an inner need, inner need to, to go beyond rationalism to find a, some new connection for for oneself and for for other possibilities of action. Yeah, um, you're right. I think that in, for the generation, the generation of of, um, of Europeans, not only not only actually post-communist countries, but also in other countries, but in post-communist countries for sure, it was some belief that the democracy and human rights and the social justice and the better future is something which is which is which has to come, and it is generation after '68 with a, a little hippie belief uh, that um, we can decide how the world will be looking like and that the nature and the beauty and love um, is the important part of that and that the weak people and the weak creatures like animals have the rights. In the same time, this, um, this illusion about the official politics, about the, the people who are um, leading the political political um, uh, regimes and the illusion about official um, church, especially Catholic church, uh, among this generation was started to really grow. And I think that is a lot of anger. Uh, it's a lot of anger and feeling that we are not living the life we believe that is right one. Uh, and of course that is not like openly political field, but I think underneath is some expression of this anger which is growing and uh, uh, a lot of populist, uh, po populist politicians which started to win several elections now in important countries like uh, uh, Trump in the US, in, uh, Erdogan, Kaczynski, Orban and so and maybe in France today uh, they, uh, they think that the people who are angry that is the people who are um, who are who are who doesn't like democracy? Who are nationalistic? Who are xenophobic? Who doesn't want to uh, to to accept the others, the different? But in reality, I think even stronger anger is growing now in those who exactly are believing in 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 the justice and um, and human rights and animals' rights and ecology and all these things and they try to create like the new religion. Well, because you know, it's our, my generation has the same problem but it's a lack of spirituality that you have to replace with something, right? You have to, uh, obviously the Polish Catholic Church for example is very difficult to, for people who are a bit more open, 
open-minded and uh, you know socially aware and because they're you know very very right-wing and they're 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 not open uh, to to differentness you know but uh, we need we need to replace this lack of spirituality with something and I think it is my generation and younger generation also feel it very strongly. Mm. <laughs> so it is. Um, <laughs> Populist anger, <laughs> so spiritual anger, right? Uh, among all the characters in, in, in the film, I'm a little intrigued by the young man, the IT wizard, who has only, yes, uh, he has only 80 items of worldly possession. And then Dushenko called him an active, curious loner. And I think in a lot of your films, in a lot of your protagonists are actually active, Curious longer because there are a lot of people who have to make serious, major moral decisions, and when they make those decisions, they are all very lonely and alone. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, interesting. What do you think? Interesting. <laughs> I think it's a question for you. Um, I don't know how to explain it, frankly, uh, but probably you're right. Yes. Maybe important decisions have a cost, right? True to something, and it must have a cost. <laughs> it mostly they, they, they do, but um, I think that this is the beauty of the life, you know, mm -hmm. that you can make the decisions, exactly, at least for me. Maybe it's like one of those characters that is longing for you because you, you, you're the opposite of this, right? Well, I you, have like you keep everything. You thousands have of objects. Thousands and hundreds of thousands of objects. You love and beautiful objects. And also, I, um, I have several places I live, because I live in, in Los Angeles, in Paris, in uh, Brittany, in Warsaw, and those objects are like... They, they mostly travel from one place to the other. No, no, they are ah. sitting there. <laughs> uh, a last question. Uh, the role of art in this age of Robert of counter revolution, are you optimistic? Are you, some people think that uh, in these times creativity will flourish. What, do you, what are you like? Um, in the difficult times, difficult times are good for cinema, yeah. Except, of course, if it's North Korea. It means you need some. I think that the, the, the conscience that the world is complex, complicated place, which asks us for for some efforts and for some choices, difficult choices exactly. And that the good and bad and evil are very close together. And we can, we can believe about ourselves that we are good, decent people. And after on the first, you know, first confrontation with the, um, with the danger, we can show that in reality we are not, that we are able to do something very terrible. And this like moral ambiguity it's something which is maybe not healthy, but in the same time, I think it makes art much more profound. So the bad times are good for art. That is my consolation for artists, because the viewers maybe prefer bad art and good times. Uh, I have one last question before I open the discussion to the floor. About your work on television, uh, you've done quite a number of very successful television series. How does that differ from working on projects that are more personal to you? Some television is personal to me. Uh -huh. For yeah. example, when I did the mini-series for European HBO, Babin uh -huh. Bush, it yes. was very personal. Uh -huh. and we developed together with Kasia and my sister the Polish TV series called Prime Minister which was political contemporary Polish drama like 10 years ago, right? And, uh, and it was very, you know, very personal and very interesting project. When I'm directing the episodes of, some, of somebody's series, of course it's more the stylistic exercise. It's not so profoundly important to me. Uh, but still, it's, you know, it's my, it's my profession, it's my vocation to do it, and I enjoy it. And it's like a journey. You are, it's like if, if, if it, you know, the difference is like being in your own country, in your home, or go on the trip and come, for example, to Hong Kong. 
the TV series for me is quite often like going to Hong Kong. And um, my own movies is like sitting in my place, which uh, sometimes you want to go someplace. So especially I did the series like uh, The Wire or Treme. On Treme I did the pilot, uh, which is more than just do the episodes because I had to design the series to find the style for that and the cast and, and so on. Uh, but you know, I, I like television. It's something that my temperament is more television than cinema. The cinema is mostly like three years of work on one project, and the television can happen very quickly. And uh, I am fast. But uh, I, you know, the patience is something. It's good to practice. So long feature films are good for my soul. And, and Kasia, she loves television. I think that she loves television maybe more, do it making television. Maybe. I think maybe even more than from me, yes, some, somehow. Uh, especially if it's a, it's a personal project, right? Mm -hmm. Because I, I just like the fact that you have so much time to tell the story. I think cinema is just too short. Two hours, three hours, it's just yeah. too short. To, you have to simplify what you want to say. You have to simplify your characters, always. There's always a simplification in the TV series. You have 20 hours to tell the same story and you can really look at all the shades of grey of your characters in the story and